Have you wondered why aren't keyboards organized in alphabetical order? Well, modern laptop keyboards we all know go back to typewriters, and those, at first, had piano-like keys and they were arranged alphabetically. But it wasn't convenient. Most commonly used letters were too close together, which resulted in frequent mechanical jams, so typing was pretty annoying. So Mr. Christopher Latham Scholes, one of the inventors of the first typewriter, came up with a QWERTY keyboard layout instead. The idea behind that layout was to spread the most commonly used combination of letters like ST or TH. This way it was preventing mechanical problems. This realignment helps the alternation between both hands, which increases the speed of typing. Now, why do we even need two shift keys if both do the same thing? Well, it's just to make it more convenient to use with a single key on the keyboard. When the key you need to use is located on the right side of the keyboard, you use right shift. And when the key is on the left side, you use the left shift. The same applies to two alt and two control keys. Now, even though they serve the same purpose, they still have different scan codes, and you can assign each of them with different functions manually if you like. For example, in an international keyboard setting, the right alt allows typing a German letter S set, while the left alt won't do it. Those little feet keyboards are actually standard. The height of the keyboard should be adjustable, allowing an angle between 0 and 15 degrees. The recommended angle is 5 to 12 degrees, by the way. The reason to fold the feet out is for you to see the keys better, in case you don't touch type. A little problem that comes with that is that, in this case, your wrists are bent, and it can be tiring to keep them in this position and type. So the feet are there to give you a choice. The symbol here isn't some brand new internet invention. No one knows exactly where it originated, but researchers date it back to Middle Ages at least. The first documentation found with that symbol is from the year 1536. They say that at is short for the Latin word ad, which means at, to, or towards. At first, they wrote it as ad, but the upstroke of the D was curved left to the A. With time to make it shorter, the D was just replaced with the circle around the A. It was also commonly used back in the older days to mark prices. Then, for a while, the symbol disappeared. It wasn't even in the first typewriter's keyboards. But with the development of computers, people needed a symbol to connect several machines. For example, they needed to send something to a particular user at a particular computer. And the name of the user and the name of the computer had to be divided by something. So they came back to the at symbol. Meanwhile, the two sides of a cotton pad are different because each of them has a particular purpose. A cotton pad has several layers to ensure that it's soft, strong, and can absorb liquids. The edge is stitched to hold it all together. The smooth side of the pad is for applying, and the side with the pattern is best for cleansing and makeup removal. Also, any pack of cotton pads has those strings on the sides. They're there so you can hang the package somewhere. Then you can open the package on the bottom, where the perforated line is, and take them out from the bottom one by one. Speaking of eggs, I think I will. All eggs have numbers stamped on them, and they say something about the egg. The first digit can be 0, 1, 2, or 3, and it tells you about how the egg was produced. 0 means it's organic, 1 says it's a free-range egg, 2 says that it's from the indoors, and 3 means it comes from furnished cages. Sounds posh, doesn't it? Then there are letters, which are country codes that tell you in what country the egg was produced. The other four of five digits are the exact code of the egg producer. Also, there's a three-digit number on the side of an egg carton, and that number indicates the day of the year when the eggs were produced. So 001 stands for January 1st, 120 stands for April 30th, and 365 is December what? 31st. You were paying attention. All eggs are typically either white or brown. The color depends on the breed of the hen. Typically, white chickens lay white-shelled eggs, and dark chickens lay brown-shelled eggs. But even chickens of the same breed can lay eggs of different colors, depending on the genetics of the particular hen. Also, some chicken breeds lay bluish eggs. And no, there's no nutritional difference between white and brown eggs. Speaking of stuff to use in the morning, coffee stirring sticks have holes in them. Plastic usually bends when put in hot drinks. With the holes, the stick becomes sturdier and can withstand the heat. The bonus is that there's less plastic required to produce them this way. Have you noticed that a pair of wooden chopsticks are always connected? 
good for you, it's a new pair. This way, you can always find out if someone had used them before you. Ew. Microwave ovens cook and heat up your food by using microwave radiation and making it pass through your food. This radiation can heat up your body just like it heats up the food. That's why this radiation is dangerous for people, because it'll cause burns if one is exposed to it. Uh, that's why we now call my dad Pop. <laughs> for this reason, microwave ovens are designed in a way to prevent microwaves from escaping. The door that is made of plastic and glass isn't enough to keep radiation inside. So, say thanks to this great pattern microwave ovens have on their doors. It's made of metal and acts as a cage, not allowing the waves to pass. So, that pattern is always there to protect you. Now, with selfies taking over the social media world, phone companies had to adapt to the way people hold their phones and use their cameras. Apparently, most users tilt their heads slightly to the right when taking selfies. With the camera located in the left corner, it makes it easier to make sure the camera will be in line with the usual tilt of selfie takers. Ooh, genius! This allows for a more natural look, making the image look better to leave you feeling great. Cameras on the back of most phones are on the left side as well. Sorry, left-handers, this was designed for the more common right-hander. Mount Everest might be getting all the attention, but Mauna Kea in Hawaii is technically the tallest mountain in the world. Measuring over 33,000 feet from base to summit, the only thing holding Mauna Kea back from the title is that it's mostly underwater. Australia is wider than the moon. The moon has a diameter of over 2,100 miles, while Australia's diameter from coast to coast is almost 2,500 miles. While it may be wider, the moon wins with the land area – over 15 million square miles! Whew, that's huge! And all that cheese! Antididophobia is the fear that, at any point, somewhere in the world, a duck or goose may be watching you. The person isn't necessarily afraid that the duck or goose will get too close to them or even touch them. They just don't like the feeling of being watched. It was first described in a comic strip to show how anyone can be afraid of anything. Anything can be a phobia. A duck just watching my every move would certainly give me the heebie-jeebies. I might just quack up. Crows are pretty good at recognizing people's faces and have even been found to remember people for a long time. This could be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on how nice you are to them. You don't want to come across a crow that's holding a grudge against you. You probably can't tell which crow is which very easily, so it might be better to play it safe and just give them all a little wave. In the city of Yoro in Central America, they have an annual event known as the Reign of Fish. Not that the locals get a choice for it anyways. Every year in May or June, a torrential rainstorm rolls through town, leaving a mass of fish flopping around in the streets. The phenomenon is believed to be caused by water spouts or water tornadoes, which drop the fish far from home. Seafood delivery for free? Yes, please. A photon, the most basic part of light, takes thousands, maybe millions of years to travel from the sun's core to its surface. But it only takes 8 minutes and 20 seconds on average to get to your eye once it's at the surface. That means that the sunlight we see is very ancient, older than the human race itself. There are only four words in the English language which end in DOS. Tremendous, horrendous, stupendous, and hazardous. Sounds like the teacher's comment on my report card. A single strand of spaghetti onto your fork has a name. It's called a spaghetto. In the Italian language, an I at the end of the word means that it's plural, while an O is singular. This goes for all types, like gnocco instead of gnocchi fettuccino instead of fettuccine, and raviolo for a single parcel of goodness. Accidentally eating one of those fruit stickers on apples, peaches, and pears shouldn't worry you at all. They can be eaten, but they aren't exactly edible. It'll just leave your body as everything else does. The glue used for them is regulated by the FDA, but it's still recommended that you wash the fruit and remove the sticker before chomping down on it. Dolphins not only have names for each other, but they'll call out for their friends specifically. Makes you wonder what names dolphins have for us when we get in the water. Hey, look, Frank! Those hairless monkeys are back in the water again! <laughs> 
German chocolate cake is one of the most delicious cakes out there. It's my all-time favorite. But its name has nothing to do with the country at all. Named after an American baker called Samuel German, who made the tasty treat in 1852. The Eiffel Tower can be 6 inches taller during the summer because of thermal expansion. When the iron heats up during really hot days, the iron particles expand, taking up even more space. Two planets in our solar system rotate the opposite way as the others. Venus and Uranus have this backward rotation. Venus also has the longest day of any planet in our solar system, completing a rotation every 243 Earth days. A baby puffin has the adorable name of Puffling. To feed its chick, the puffin parent will carry about 10 fish in its beak at a time. While you sleep, you can't smell anything. Even really, really bad or potent smells. Our taste and smell senses are cut down by 50 to 20% during flights. This is why airplane food always tastes like cardboard or too salty. Sounds like a pretty convenient excuse from the airlines to me. Look at any watch advertisements, and the time on display should be 10:10. This is because of the positive effect it has. It looks like a smile, and usually the brand name of the watch is directly below the 12. Stewardesses is the longest word that is typed with only the left side of the keyboard. The word itself isn't used much anymore. Most people say flight attendant instead. Those dum-dums who call out, hey, you, are normally invited to exit the aircraft mid-flight. The moon has volcanoes, and scientists believe they might have been active around 100 million years ago, when dinosaurs still ruled our planet. The view must have been magnificent. Cockroaches are tough. They can survive harsh conditions and have been around since dinosaurs ruled our planet. But the termite queen beats all that with a lifespan of 50 years. That's the longest any insect can live. Regular termites live only one to two years. It's estimated that a total of 108 billion people lived on Earth throughout history. The entire population of Earth could fit inside Los Angeles. With the world's population being 7.5 billion, this seems crazy. But if everyone stood shoulder to shoulder, we could all fit inside 500 square miles. The tuatara is a reptile that has a third eye on top of its head. The eye has a retina, nerve connections, and a lens, but isn't used for seeing, as during growth it quickly becomes covered by scales. Scientists are still trying to find the eye's mysterious function. Camels have three sets of eyelids and two rows of eyelashes to protect them from the blowing sands of the desert. The pandas in your local zoo may look at home, but unless you're in China, they're just on vacation. That's because technically, all pandas are on loan from China and are the property of that country. A full current NASA spacesuit cost between 15 and 22 million dollars in 1974. But NASA hasn't actually built any new suits since 74, leading to them only having four working suits left. If they are to create another suit, in today's money, that would translate to a cost of $150 million. A tiny percentage of static that you see on an old TV screen is residual radiation left over from the Big Bang. If you're heading to London to see the famous London Bridge, think again, as the original bridge is now in Arizona. By the 1960s, London Bridge was falling down so, the city decided to sell it to an American oil tycoon, Robert P. McCullough. It was shipped over to the U.S. and can now be found in Lake Havasu City. Speaking of England, the crown jewels contain two of the largest cut diamonds of all time. The Cullinan Diamond is the largest diamond ever found and is part of the sovereign scepter with cross. The second gem is the aptly named Cullinan II which is mounted in the impressive imperial state crown. The real giants among diamonds, though, could be raining down on Jupiter and Saturn as you watch this video. That's because lightning storms turn methane into carbon, which gradually hardens as it falls and turns into diamonds. 
Next time you're struggling to concentrate when studying, try reaching for a stick of gum. A study found that participants who chewed gum while taking a memory test could stay focused longer than those who didn't. Common sense would suggest that trees have been around before most animals as they produce oxygen for us to breathe. If you were to tell this to a shark, it would laugh as the sea creatures were actually around long before trees. Sharks date back around 400 million years, with trees coming in at about 50 million years later. The Comic Sans font has divided people across the world for decades and has developed a reputation for being informal or unprofessional. This makes perfect sense given its creation, as designer Vincent Canare looked to his favorite comic books, like Watchmen, for inspiration. If you're looking for a bodyguard from the animal kingdom, look no further. The silverback gorilla can lift up to 10 times its own body weight, which translates to a total of around 1,800 pounds. This makes them one of the strongest living mammals on Earth. Humans are the only animals with chins. While other animals like the chimpanzee share similarities with humans, like walking on two legs or having a jaw, none actually have that little bit of bone in the middle of the lower jaw. Movie trailers were originally shown after the movie, which is why they're called trailers. The current American flag was designed by a high school student. Bob Heft designed the flag for his history class in 1958 and was only given a B-minus for his efforts. Later, his design was chosen out of more than 1,500 others to become the new flag. His grade was unsurprisingly changed to an A after this. Unlike humans, cats don't have the same amount of toes on their front and back paws. They usually have five toes on their front paws, but only four on their back ones. If you've got a feline companion, go and take a look. Ever wondered what that tiny pocket in your jeans is for? It's a watch pocket, and was originally intended as a place to store pocket watches. It dates back to 1879, to the first pair of Levi's jeans. Your brain uses different hemispheres to store different memories. Things you hear or read are stored in the left hemisphere, and pictures or events you've seen in the right one. Hidden beneath the ice and frozen earth in Antarctica and Siberia, there are two giant viruses. They are 10 times larger than those we know and can survive for tens of thousands of years. There's a real-life Jurassic Park in Monaco. The Kem Kem beds are an extremely rich source of dinosaur fossils, with dozens of species uncovered in the last few decades. Around 34 million years ago, ancient primates crossed the Atlantic from Africa to South America. And nobody knows how. Well, I hate to break this to you, but money isn't actually made of paper, which also proves that money doesn't actually grow on trees. Most banknotes are 25% linen and 75% cotton, which is why they have such a distinct look and feel. Back in the 19th century, money was made of parchment paper. That's why people could very easily counterfeit it, unlike now. The Eiffel Tower is almost 6 inches taller during the summer. When you heat up some substance, its particles start to move more actively and take up a bigger volume. That's something they call thermal expansion. When the temperature lowers, the substance contracts again. Such an effect is more prominent in gases, but you can also track it in liquids and solids, including iron. Because of this, people build large structures like bridges using expansion joints. They allow a structure some leeway to expand and contract, and such changes don't cause any damage. Wow, I have some pants like that. Now, honey can last for thousands of years without going bad. Bees land on flowers to collect sugary nectar. Then they transport it back to their hive and transfer it to other worker bees. These bees reduce the water content of the nectar by repeatedly drinking and regurgitating the liquid. Hmm, bee barf. Special enzymes in their stomachs break down the glucose in the nectar, and it becomes more acidic. Bees deposit this nectar in the honeycomb and start fanning it with their wings so that the water evaporates more quickly. The honey is now highly acidic and low in water content, which keeps it safe from spoiling. The bacteria that can cause the rest of the food to go off can't survive in such conditions. Now, a long time ago, people didn't elevate their mattresses off the floor. 
This practice started in ancient Egypt and continued in many other cultures. People realized it was cold on the floor, and they could warm their beds easier if they were off the ground. Houses used to be more drafty. Cold air came in from under the doors. There was no central heating, so people had to find other ways to stay warm. Warm air tends to rise, and if you're positioned higher, you won't be as cold as on the floor. Also, this way, people could keep their beds clean more easily. In simple homes, floors used to be way dirtier than today, and all that dirt usually migrated into beds. Continuing now to talk dirty, do you think people are naturally clean and tidy? After all, our ancestors, who lived thousands of years ago, already used latrines and were tidying their hair with combs. And they kept their homes and themselves clean. Our natural need for hygiene and cleanliness is driven by our sense of disgust. That's the very mechanism that helps our bodies stay safe and protects them from different infections. That's why we're more sensitive to certain smells and things. But we still have some pretty sloppy habits. For example, eating snacks over a keyboard. Ew! I certainly never do that. But there are animals that are even neater than us humans. For example, rattlesnakes like to keep their surroundings tidy. Some of them even use their muscular necks and triangular heads to sweep aside messy grass when they hunt. Many animals like to clear their path when going after their future meal. Reptiles, too. Less vegetation increases their chances of catching food. Songbirds also prefer to keep it neat and get rid of uneaten food, eggshells, and other trash in their nests. This way, they also make their homes less visible to their enemies. Meanwhile, out in space, shadows are darker on the moon than on our planet. That's because the atmosphere on Earth scatters more sunlight. But if you could visit the moon, you'd observe shadows so dark you wouldn't be able to see where you were going. Also, you'd notice fresh footprints on the lunar surface. People haven't set foot there in a few decades, but the footprints look as if they were left just yesterday. Since there's no water or wind on the moon, nothing can erase these footprints. So they stay there in their original form for millions of years. So be careful where you step, huh? Earth's core contains enough gold to coat the entire planet. And if you decided to do this, the level of this precious metal would be knee-high. For thousands of years, people have been mining gold and platinum, together with a bunch of other precious metals, from underneath our planet's surface. That's why we have depleted some of the minerals in certain areas. But Earth still has a huge number of such deposits, especially if you get closer to its core. That's because of countless meteorites that collided with our planet during the period of its formation. Those meteorites contain different minerals, including gold. Back then, Earth was still in its molten state, which is why most of the gold, a heavy element, sank deep into its core. And the silicate mantle, positioned over the core, trapped really huge amounts of gold and some other minerals. Unfortunately, most of them are kind of out of reach now, since we talk about 1,800 miles below the surface and temperatures of thousands of degrees. Too hot, in other words. Sure, if you were about to go into space, one of the first things you'd think of would be your spacesuit. But do you know that it's possible to survive in space even if you aren't wearing any protection? Well, don't get your hopes up yet. You'd last for no more than 15 seconds. That's how long it would take you to lose consciousness, because oxygen will stop coming to your brain. In 1965, one technician accidentally depressurized his suit inside a vacuum chamber. He lost consciousness after 12 to 15 seconds. 27 seconds later, his suit luckily got repressurized. The man later said that he remembered the moisture on his tongue started to boil. He also lost his sense of taste, and it didn't come back until four days after the accident. Now, you can't hold your breath in space either, so that won't save you. Your lungs will rupture at one point because the air inside will expand. The oxygen in other parts of your body will start to expand too, which means you will balloon up to twice your regular size, almost like Dudley Dursley's Aunt Marge from Harry Potter. Scientists have found that cell phones carry 10 times more bacteria than most toilet seats. So yeah, you might want to sanitize your phone after watching this video. Do you use FaceTime or Skype to talk to each other worldwide? It could be for a chat, a meeting, or something else. The webcam technology was born with a very reasonable goal, though. In 1993, researchers at the Computer Science Department at the University of Cambridge set up a system to see if the coffee pot was empty or not. 
Yes, you heard it right. Researchers needed coffee to fuel their brains, as many of us do. They get up from their chairs, go to the coffee pot, and find it empty. Instead of making sure that someone makes a fresh coffee, they wired up a system. The system would stream the images of the room where the coffee pot was kept. At that time, it was three pictures taken per minute. It's more than enough to see if the pot has coffee in it or not. Thanks to the researchers for not getting up from their chairs. And for another tiny thing, coming up with this brilliant idea. Do you buy white eggs or brown eggs? What's the difference besides the color? Since brown eggs tend to cost you more, you might think that something in them makes the prices a bit higher. Nope, the color of the eggshell doesn't affect its nutrition or quality. Both eggs are healthy. Brown eggs cost more because the hens that lay them need more feed. It's more pricey to raise them than the white egg hens. The cost is reflected onto the consumer. There is a hole at the handle of some kitchen pots and pans. We mostly use this hole to place the kitchen utensil vertically on a cabinet door. They have a secondary use. Imagine you're cooking multiple dishes to make a feast for the family. The kitchen counter is full of stuff. You have a hard time finding a place for the gravy sauce spoon. You can place the spoon in the hole on the edge of the saucepan handle. It will stay there safely until you decide to stir the sauce again. Not every spoon fits into the hole it might easily slide to the floor. Better to have a test run where the spoon is clean. Imagine you have a takeaway of noodles with an extra topping on your way home. You recently moved and all the plates are in the boxes. You struggle with this noodle box. The toppings are stuck at the bottom. The sauce didn't mix evenly either. We've missed out on an easier way to eat from the takeout boxes. They can be flat and serve as plates. You take the edges of the paper out and open it up. There you go. Now you have a plate. The best part is you don't have to clean it up afterwards. Did you know that a tomato is not a veggie, but a fruit? So is an avocado. Watermelon is actually a berry. There's more to that. Peanuts are not in the nuts family. They're different from almonds and cashews. Peanuts grow pods under the soil. They're harvested like potatoes. Their upper parts are like bushes. These tasty ciders are not classified as nuts since they grow under the ground, not on a tree. They get pulled up from the soil like carrots. Next time you eat peanuts in a friend circle, you can mention this new fact you heard. Or it can be an icebreaker when you see someone eating peanuts. Classifying food as fruit or a vegetable is a tricky business. Do you know who invented t-shirts? In 1904, the Cooper Underwear Company prepared an ad and introduced its new product with before and after photos. It was referred to as an undershirt. The slogan was, no safety pins, no buttons, no needle, no thread. As the name revealed, they were worn under the clothes. One day, it was announced that sailors should wear undershirts with no buttons under their uniforms. T-shirt love spread like pollen at a park on a spring day. Soon, thousands of men started wearing them. Though t-shirts go back to the 19th century, now we have all adjusted to the comfort of our cozy t-shirts. Do you also wear t-shirts like the sailors? So, grocery carts have loops for a reason. You don't want to put your jacket in your cart next to a bunch of potatoes and onions, do you? Hang it on the loop instead. It's there to help you organize your cart better. Carts also have a cool section at the bottom. Whenever your cart's full, just lift it up and attach a shopping basket for extra purchases. Lift up the whole metal thing, sit your basket on the horizontal bar above the wheels, and secure it with those handy hooks. If you've got some pesky parsley stuck in your teeth, try this tip. It can be hard to get it all out with loose floss. You need more tension. Just tie it in a knot. Toothpaste stripes may seem a bit weird. It's just a marketing trick. Back in the 70s, a leading toothpaste brand added a blue stripe to show that their toothpaste had double action. Solid white toothpaste worked just as well. But those blue bristles on your toothbrush actually make sense. They gradually lose their color over time. When the blue's faded, it's time to change your toothbrush. Ever notice that tiny hole on the bottom of a padlock? 
Its hidden purpose is to drain water out to keep it from rusting. It's also the place to lubricate a padlock. A drop of oil in there will make it open and close way easier. Those ridges on the edge of dimes aren't just for show. People used to shave off the edges, then melt the edges down into new coins. But thanks to the new design, it's easy to tell if someone's been shaving the edges off. If you still struggle with peeling an orange, here's another way of opening it. First, cut off the top and bottom. Make a slit on the side and pull it open. That knobbly bit sticking out of the cap of your favorite cream is there for a reason. These tubes are usually sealed with foil. So unless you love breaking your nails trying to open them, just flip the cap over and push. The tiny rubber disc under every bottle cap isn't just for seeing if you want a lifetime supply of soda. It's what keeps your drink all nice and bubbly. The lid keeps the liquid inside. The rubber disc keeps the gas inside. Until you drink it. (laughs) If you use the blue side of your eraser to erase pen, your notebooks are probably all full of holes. The blue side's there for when you need to erase something on much thicker paper. It works on pencil and even ink, as long as the paper's thick enough. Your bobby pins might not stay in place if the grooves aren't facing the right way. They should always be on the bottom, close to your head. Still coming loose? Put a squeeze of hairspray right onto the bobby pin before you put it in your hair. Many glass bottles usually have some sort of indent at the bottom. It's handy if you want to be fancy. Put your thumb in the indent and pour away. The technical name for this little dude is a punt. Those sugar sticks at your local coffee stand are ready to be opened in a new and easier way. Look how happy they are! Try splitting it right down the middle. No more sugar on your fingers. No more tiny little paper bit. Even your coffee's happier. Your cotton rounds pack has those strings on it, so you can hang it on a handy hook in the bathroom. But there's no need to loosen and tighten back up again every time. Check out the bottom of the pack. It has a perforated line. Tear it open carefully, and you're good to go. Doorknobs are usually made of brass, bronze, or some other copper alloy. Why? They're antibacterial, so they stop microbes from spreading. Just a couple of hours, and the pesky microbes are gone. But don't forget to wash your hands anyway. Bottles have long necks for a reason. Hold the neck, not the bottle, if you want to enjoy a cold drink. Two zips too much? Maybe, but they come in handy as a clever anti-theft device. Just lock them together. Now no one can open your backpack. Don't have a lock on you? You can also tie them together with some string or even just a paper clip. Anything to slow those pickpockets down. That tiny little button on the back of a shirt collar is used to hold your tie in place. You don't want your tie trying to escape back there. Shoe manufacturers care about their customers. So most running shoes now have a special anti-blister system pre-installed. Hmm. Sounds intense, but it's basically just that extra hole on top of your sneakers. Make a loop with the extra hole, inserting the lace backwards. Cross your laces and put them through the loops. Now pull the laces down to lock your foot in place. Now run! You'll find silica gel packets when you buy bags, shoes, even some snacks. Don't throw them away. They soak up excess moisture, so any times your shoes are a bit damp, chuck a few gel packets in there overnight. You might have been using your shampoo wrong this whole time. Really? Here's the gist. Don't apply it to your hair. Just apply it to the roots. The foam you create will trickle down on your hair anyway. Notebook margins aren't for taking extra notes or practicing emojis. They were invented to protect people's work. People used to live with a lot of hungry rats around. The rats would nibble at the paper, eating people's work. They put the margin lines there to let people know to start their writing further from the edge so it's not lost to a hungry rodent. Solo cups are the key element for any barbecue party. But these red cups are even cooler than you thought. You can use them to measure liquids. The bottom line equals 1 ounce, the second line equals 5 ounces, 
and the third line equals 12 ounces. You're traveling by plane overnight and just can't get to sleep. And the first night in a hotel wasn't great, regardless of how comfy the bed was. This is because of a human evolutionary trait called the first night effect. When you sleep in a different place than your home, the left side of the brain responds to more sounds while you're asleep. It continues to analyze your surroundings without you realizing, acting as though it's on a night watch and keeping you alert for any potential dangers. Most animals have this trait, although it's a lot more subtle in humans. But it's still effective enough to make sure you get your peanuts. Before playing basketball with hoops, you would have instead been playing with peach baskets. When the game was invented in 1891, a peach basket was used, with the bottom of it cut off. But it only took 15 years for players to grow tired of constantly collecting the jammed balls and to remove the basket altogether. When you click your fingers, the snapping sound isn't from the physical click of finger and thumb. The noise actually comes from the finger hitting the palm. The instant film for the first Polaroid cameras didn't have their own coating after taking a photo. To develop it, you applied it yourself. Waiting for it to dry took a long time, so shaking it sped up the process. Then, from the 1970s, the film provided everything required for the photo to develop, making the popular craze of shaking Polaroids pointless. Shaking the photo can cause the ink to wave or blur before drying properly, so you shouldn't actually shake it like a Polaroid picture and just wait patiently instead. Bug spray doesn't repel all bugs, especially the worst of them all, mosquitoes. It does cover the scent of carbon dioxide, which is what attracts mosquitoes. But the spray only protects you for a short distance. Mosquitoes can also track carbon dioxide over long distances. They will continue to stalk you until they find a gap in your invisible bug shield. A great alternative is lavender, which contains linalool. This fragrance completely overloads the mosquito's senses, making it unable to track you. The half belt on the back of some jackets appear like a fashion accessory. It was initially designed that way for larger jackets, as they could also be used as a blanket to wrap around oneself. The belt's position helps hold the material together, so it's easier to walk with whilst keeping you warm. Ketchup wasn't originally intended to be your favorite condiment. In 1834, a physician, John Cook, sold ketchup as a cure for indigestion. It was an immediate hit, and today, 10 billion ounces are purchased annually in the USA, although not as the intended medicine. Thomas Edison made over 1,000 inventions, and one in particular, the light bulb, is most famously linked to him. However, he didn't actually invent it. Warren Delarue, a British chemist, had solved this scientific challenge 40 years earlier. There were also 20 other inventors who made alternate versions before Edison did. But earlier varieties relied on cotton thread and only lasted up to 14 hours. Edison, in 1880, used a carbonized bamboo thread instead, and his worked up to 1,200 hours. It became the most commercially viable light bulb, and today's ones are similarly shaped to Edison's original. The first treadmill was used in England in 1818. It was a large wooden cylinder with a handrail, although it wasn't used to keep fit. Convicted criminals would be forced to use these for up to 10 hours per day as a punishment. The energy output potential was realized, and soon it was built to work with water pumps and grain grinders. It was so effective that it was used in all prisons throughout the country. But in 1902, it was decided that it was too harsh and stopped. And now, this cruel punishment is mainly found in gyms. During the 1940s, there was a shortage of cocoa, and it was important to find a solution to this problem. A production company found a way by mixing only a small amount of cocoa with hazelnuts and milk, and the original Nutella was created. It started out as a loaf spread, like a stick of butter. It then transformed into a creamier version inside a jar in 1951. But it wasn't until 1964 that it was given its famous name. Your passport might be a dark shade of either green, blue, or red. 
The darker color not only makes them appear more official, but is intended so that through its journeys, the dirt that's collected is more easily hidden. Wasabi was first used back in the 8th century. It wasn't meant as a spicy condiment as it's served with sushi today. Initially, it was used for its antimicrobial properties that help avoid the harmful reactions to fish with sushi that's a bit too old. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.